up, Nerf Herders? I am Scott. I'm John. Jason. And welcome to the Nerf Herders Podcast. This is episode four. It's June 26th. No, it's not. It's February 26th, 2015. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, here we are, episode four. I uh, hope you guys all had a really good week. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash Nerf Herders Podcast. Um, so we're going to kick right into movie news, and we're going to start this off with kind of a developing story that's ironically happened week after week. And... Strutter hit this nail on the head last week in the podcast, and it yeah, is now fuck. confirmed, dude. <laughs> Dead on, dude. The, the Dead Neil on, John. <laughs> <laughs> so the Neil Baumkamp alien movie confirmed is taking place between Aliens and Alien 3. Yep. So it's pretty much ignoring Alien 3 and Resurrection, and he straight up said, like, I want to go back to the horror roots of the movies. So mm -hmm. hell yeah, man. Dude, I'm so hell excited. Yeah. Yeah, I was, because uh, I, I didn't think Alien 3 was, like, a proper sequel I don't think it gave a proper ending to, like, Ripley, you know? Because, yeah. like, I mean, what? Like, so Aliens happens, and then they get on the ship, and they're flying, you know, through space, and they get lost or whatever because they're in their cryogenic freeze. And then, like, they get they kind of crash land or get, like, picked up by the prison, like, ship or whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah, yeah. And, like, and then the the little girl and, and uh, mm. Corporal Hicks are dead. You know, and it's just like, oh, okay. Like, I really yeah, like... It's, it's like a cop-out way to I, just, like, forget about this, we're moving forward. <laughs> yeah, so, like, Newton Hicks are dead, and I'm like, okay, I really liked them, and I wanted to see where they could go with this after, but no, I guess there's not going to be a developed love story out of this or anything. Yeah. Let's just put Ripley into a fucking prison with a bunch of, you know, apes, and then, like, shave her head so she looks like G.I. <laughs> Jane, and then... Killer. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know? like the, the fucking the dog. Did, uh, which was kind of <laughs> neat, but... Did he yeah. say that he was actually... He wanted to go back to the horror. Like, yeah, he's yes. like straight up. He wants to go back to that like that creepy atmosphere of like dark corridors, dude. That, like, um, well, I think it's going to be kind of weird because he hasn't really done that, you know? That's why I'm excited, dude, because the guy is such a talented director. Right. And I feel like he handles, you know, this sci-fi alien stuff so well. That yeah. I, th I think I, I'd love to see what he does with like a horror type film, and, like a legit horror film. Yeah, yeah. And I think with that, I think they're banking on the fact that like, Shit like Neil Blomkamp's just killing it, right? Uh, that that she's uh, Ripley's gonna live, you know? Like she's not gonna yeah. not gonna kill her off. Like this movie, say this movie makes buco bucks. Like you gotta make her live for leave it for like another one, you know? If yeah. you really want to move on, and yeah. they can too, dude. Which is cool because Sigourney Weaver's totally interested in it. Like definitely, you're, you're talking no way for real. Yeah, oh, yeah. she's, she's confirmed. 40, she's already years, confirmed dude. for it. 40 years pretty much since Alien, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, and, and she's still, like, we're going, down. We're coming up to 40 years. It's more like 35, I guess. But she's straight up is just like, yeah, like, I think this is awesome. I think Ripley's such an iconic character. Like, mm -hmm. I'd love to get a proper closing to that. And I'm yeah. like, dude, like, hell yeah. Like, going back to what we talked about last week, fan service, dude, and, like, mm -hmm. people being fans of franchises and, like, caring about a product. Yeah. Like, hell yeah, dude. Like, yeah. this is a good time to be alive with all this. Yeah, nobody yeah. better than Neil Baum kept Because, like, he, I mean, he comes out of the guns with, like, or comes out of the gate guns blazing with, District 9, which is, you know, fucking groundbreaking. And then he puts out Elysium, which, I mean, it got its, like, ups and downs, but I thought overall, as, like, a director, like, he killed it, you know? Yeah. That movie is very well done. Oh, yeah, even is, even yeah. if the story is kind of like, mm, you know, like, I'd it's almost, a well done film. I'd almost yeah. like to see a, dis like a District 9 sequel, you like know? a District 10 or something. You know? Dude, I would, Dude, God, I would hope they would do I, that. I'm sure they'll give him the green light on that if, if Alien is, a, if the new Alien movie is a success. I mean, and then when you look at Elysium, and then you look at Chappie, like, you can almost see he's going down that darker path, like, that yeah. more of a, like, a dramatic <clears throat> path, because I think, I think Chappie's gonna be super sad, like, just super sad and dark. Yeah, I think it's gonna be more serious than what people initially thought it was gonna be, for sure. Yeah. Because so. it, it looks killer. So, yeah, definitely, you know, if there's more develops on that, we'll obviously be talking about it, because it's just kind of cool how much this has been, like, week after week now. Dude, and Alien is, like, probably one of our favorite fucking, like, franchises ever. Oh, dude, hell yeah. You know? Yeah, like, as much as 3 and Resurrection are not up to par, like, they're still enjoyable Dude, the films. first two, though, I mean, come on, Ridley Scott and fucking James Cameron, like, ooh, oh, you can't I beat love that. it, dude. That, that's, I love a one, it. that's a one-two punch, dude. Yeah. yeah that's a one-two punch. <laughs> Um, we got our first look at Aquaman, like right almost immediately after we got done filming the podcast. This came yeah. out like Zack Snyder came out, and just dropped the image of Jason Momoa. Yeah, and for the dark, gritty tone that they're trying to go for with this DC universe, dude, like I think Aquaman looks freaking badass. No, I don't. Did you just see the? Uh, you see the meme that was floating around? It was like they showed the Momoa one is like dark, you know, badass. And they showed like Marvel's version of what Aquaman oh, looks like. It's like pretty this flowing hair. Flowing <laughs> hair <yeah. laughs> like yeah. a total Thor like ripoff, you know? I think yeah. I think it's cool. I mean, 
I like I said, I mean, I'm not a very big DC fan, but I love you know the Nolan films, and I've been kind of like hit or miss with this whole Batman vs Superman, and then they're gonna put Aquaman in the movie. He's confirmed for it, right? To make an appearance, and I think he looks badass, dude. I think he looks like this Poseidon <clears throat> motherfucker, you know? It's like cool, yeah. he's ready to like emerge from the sea and just vanquish all the villains, dude. And Jason Momoa has such the perfect look for <clears throat> that yeah. dark image that they're going for. He was in uh, Game of Thrones. He killed that role, yeah. Dude, yeah. Season one, and, and I mean, I don't know if did we watch the new Conan the Barbarian the remake? I've seen bits and pieces, dude. I hated yeah. it, but the guys, the he, guys. Dude, Dude, the guy, the like that's what I'm saying. Like the movie was like, eh, it had its like moments that were cool, but like the movie as a whole wasn't very good. But as a as an actor, he was like on par with that Conan like just role. You yeah, know what I mean? He's definitely got he's that. that look, dude. He's that caveman like motherfucker. You know? Yeah. Uh, and I'm I'm saying it right now. Dude. I know I've I've told you guys, dude. I called this the second they said Aquaman's gonna be a part of this and they were gonna do this whole Justice League officially confirmed, dude. Mark my words, dude. Aquaman is going to be the Hulk for DC. Like, they're going to take Aquaman and just make him the epitome of badass, dude. Like, mm-hmm. he's going to be the scene stealer. Like, I'm calling it right now. So? He's going to steal every scene he's in. Yeah, God, that's crazy. That, that's yeah. I hope, man. I hope. Because I want to see some, like, really epic, like, sea battles, you know? Look at that, dude. Oh, yeah. Some kind of steel, dude. It was like these, like, like these two, um... I don't even know what you call it. It's like, like magnets repelling. Yeah, off magnets. Like, yeah. Boom! <laughs> yeah. So you know he's probably waking from the like titanic slumber of his bed and is just like, yeah. what the fuck is going on right now? Yeah. What are you doing in my ocean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, good stuff. But he looks killer. Yeah, I, I like it. I like it. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that movie comes out. Yeah, I'm still hesitant, dude, but it's like, eh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, Hopefully you all got a chance to see that Power Rangers short film, because we got to see it, and it might be getting pulled off, so if you haven't, <laughs> yeah. if you haven't seen it, go check this out immediately, because it's badass. So it's a 14-minute film, a fan film, the same guy that did the Punisher Dirty yep. Laundry thing, so yeah. cool. and it stars James Vanderbeek and Katie Sackhoff, so it's like two well-known people, yep. and it's just this really dark and gritty, realistic Power Rangers kind of thing, and... Hell yeah, dude. Like, it was so I entertaining. I loved it. I loved it. I don't I, remember really much of Power Rangers, but I remember seeing some stuff, and I liked it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, you got the... It's like, it was it was that teenage show where you got, you know, the, the teenagers who are in high school, but they actually can, like, morph into these, like, ninja warriors. Yeah, you know? I remember, yeah. And they have their powers and stuff, and they have their weapons of choice, and they're, they're battling these, like, galactic villains like Rita... Who's yeah, like the lady got, with the horns? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, exactly. And then they got like <clears throat> the two school bullies, you know, who are like the kind of dorks or whatever. But like, they really put a dark twist on this dude with all the assassinations and stuff. I was just like, yeah. oh my god, it was this is cool. brutal, dude. I loved, I loved everything about this thing. I don't want to like spoil anything with it because you know there, there's some stuff that can definitely ruin it. But the very ending of it seemed like. Everything was so nice and dark, and then the very last couple seconds, I was just like, man, you just almost made this comical. Like, it almost lost the dark feeling to yeah. me, and I don't want to spoil what everything is and how it unfolds, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. It, it was almost just like, that was a bittersweet way to close this <clears throat> off. But it's interesting now because there's this huge legal lawsuit going on with um with Saban, who owns the Power Rangers. Right. What's his name? It's, it's like Saban Entertainment. Oh, Saban. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah I understand. Well. So, they, so they got this huge thing going on now where there's like this huge fight, you know, against like what's really fair use. And it's almost to the point where if this goes through, like, YouTube could be changing things and, like, people could be really screwed as far as where, what's the stipulations for making a fan film independent that can have it on the fam, internet. Yeah, independent. Like this, like, this could be a huge, huge deal. I, I don't know. I think I think it's kind of ridiculous to, to, to try and file a lawsuit against a fan, you know? Yeah, especially if they're not making money on it. Like, the dude yeah. came out and was like, I'm not making money off this. It's a right. straight-up mm-hmm. fan film. Exactly. And, like, we see fan films all the time. I mean, that Punisher short was amazing yeah, dude, that punisher killer. short was better than the punisher movies the war you know? zone. yeah punisher war zone it was better yeah. than anything they've done with the films <clears throat> and you know I, I just think it's so cool that these guys can like make a fan film with like real legit actors and then like that's cool man give a new take he, on he it, realized you know? that thomas jane was a badass and the other guy was a joe blow dude you know yeah, yeah. i don't know i <clears throat> i think it's pretty ridiculous to sue a fan over making a short film i don't know yeah i I think they're taking it too far. It's too far. It's it's too far with this legal, like, I own this art. And it's like, you don't own art. Nobody owns art. Like, the Power Rangers, yeah, it's an entity. If he was selling Power Rangers t-shirts, yeah, okay, sue the motherfucker. But, like, (laughs) (laughs) he made a film about... A cool franchise, and he turned it into like fucking jealous dude because they couldn't think of it. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. right. Check it out. If you haven't seen it, go go check it out for sure because it's awesome. Um, (laughs) Real quick here, I guess we don't got to get into this too much, but um, 
people talk to Arnold like already before this movie's out. They're like, "Hey, man, you're gonna be back for six? He's like, "Yeah, I'm going to be back." So like that kind of it's like okay, well now we know he survives the missile dive into the <laughs> helicopter. Yeah, 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 yeah. He survives that shit. You know? oh, so God. he'll be back. I don't know what else there is to say about that, but um, I'm, I thought that was interesting. I don't know, man. Like I was really excited about Terminator for Genesis. a while for Genesis, and I'm just I've lost all hype oh, I have man. for that film. Like I'm not even gonna go see it like opening night. I'll probably just wait. Like a, I'll go see it. I'll night. wait a few days. Yeah, we almost have to. You have to. I saw. I saw we'll salvation. If you guys are going, I'll go. But like we'll go, in but... my head, I'm just kind of like, they could have made the hype for this movie so much better, and it would have oh, kept yeah. me more in- entertained. But like, I've lost my interest in this. It seems a too salvation y, dude. Like, I don't like. I don't like how they're advertising it as an action film, man. Like, I don't like that. I don't the, like how it's advertised yeah. as an a, like a straight action film. Like, I know yeah. the other ones are action films, but they weren't. They didn't rely on the action. They relied on story and the action. Just yeah, the, exactly. the first one. Yeah, exactly. the first one was like a love story almost. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see. Um, we're not going to get into the spoilers of this, but the Oscars completely <laughs> dicked over Gone Girl. Like, screw the Oscars, man. Like, we ranted a little bit last week about that. Oh, but holy God. cow, man. If you've seen Gone Girl and you watch the Oscars, you What's know What's the exactly big daddy? Is Oscars or Academy Awards? Academy Awards is the same it's thing. It's all the same thing. Oscars is like a, a short title for an Academy Award. Mm. Yeah, so like, <clears throat> they completely dicked the movie over. And yep. it's like, people that have seen the movie, it probably doesn't hit, but it's like, What? And people who haven't seen the movie, now you're going to just be anticipating that segment they showed, and yeah. you're, you're going to start piecing it together. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe they did that. <laughs> yeah. It's, I can't believe it. I've never been a fan of the Oscars. I mean... It didn't just, win anything? I can't believe she didn't win for yeah. Best Actress. Like, that was the one I was hoping of. Like, <laughs> that is the one Wait, who, won, who won Best Actress then? Um, Julianne Moore. Yeah. Who, who, I, I don't know. I think she she's kind of washed up, but... I, I didn't even see the movie she was in. I just did Rosamund Pike to me, like... That, that's she one of killed those it. That was that yeah. was that was what made the movie so good. Was yeah. her performance? Like I like Ben Affleck, but like <clears throat> she really just killed it on that role. Yeah, you know. So freaking whatever, man. If you've seen wow. it, you guys know that's crazy. <laughs> um, and, yeah, I don't know. I'm over the Oscars, man. Because like even Nightcrawler, it's like oh yeah, that got dicked <sighs> over too, right? Oh, my God, I, I don't know how Jake Gyllenhaal didn't get nominated. I don't know how that movie got nothing but screenplay, and I don't know how it didn't win for screenplay. Like I don't. I'm glad it got recognized and stuff. Yeah, he like killed that role. That movie, yeah. that movie, to me, was one of the best films of, of the year. It was. And there's, there's exciting so well stuff done. about the Oscars. Like the whole idea of like who's winning is like, eh. but like it's cool to see like all the people that like you watch in film and you love. And they're all kind of like on this grandest stage one yeah. night. You know what I mean? Like it's cool. It's like WrestleMania, dude. It's like WrestleMania has been shit, but it's cool to sit there and see all these people. You know? <laughs> it's next month, man. Yeah, it's next month. <laughs> it's gonna suck again. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um. So Avengers: Age of Ultron released this. Monster bloated poster, which was just like a, a fucking Photoshop shit fest. Yeah, yeah, dude. It's and like every character like blown up in your way face. Too much. They didn't so show just like Silver Surfer and or uh, uh, New Vision. No, not Vision. They didn't show him in the, in the poster. Or uh, I said Silver Surfer. I meant uh, Quicksilver. It's Quicksilver. Thank you. Oh, Quicksilver. Were they not in there? <laughs> I don't think so. No, I, I looked. Silver Scarlet Witch. And you saw. You, in there, you right? saw Quick Star Scarlet Witch in the back. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, yeah, well, I mean, they're like hiding out. Like, they're, they're there, dude. But it, the, the best thing about this whole poster, dude, which was two things, two bits of things that were really awesome. Number one, Anthony Mackie's name appeared yep. in you know the credit listing. So yeah. this is like the first time we're hearing Anthony Mackie's in the movie. So yep. like, he's awesome, man. It was really yeah. Good. So Very Falcon's cool. gonna be in there, which is awesome. Yeah, man. So I'm that's really, really happy cool. about that for sure. And the, the other thing that's cool is Danny Elfman's name was on the poster as contributing music. Which, I read this article, so dig this shit, dude. Danny Elfman, who did the Spider-Man, you know, theme and all that. Right. Like, it says he's, a, like, providing additional music. So, like, why is Danny Elfman coming in just, just to do a little bit? Like, wouldn't it be almost, like, kind of cool if, like, there was a little segment, like, maybe in the post-credits? That would be cool. Where they, they link to the music. Some, you know what I mean? I don't know. It's, it's kind of interesting. Like, why Danny Elfman for a little bit for this big of a movie? Like, yeah. It's really wild. Post yeah. credits, so you see, you just see like this like major spider web and like this like silhouette. That would be cool, man. If they if they were that, able yeah. to, like, I mean, I'm sure they'll have to CGI whatever it is to make it like a hint at it, you know, because filming's been done since like January. But like, I think that'd be kind of cool to like kind of hint at like, okay, we're gonna get Spider Man like eventually. We know we're going to, but it would be cool to put that in there in like a post credit yeah. sequence. Yeah. Wouldn't that be pretty wild? That'd be yeah. that'd be awesome. So that, I thought those are like two really interesting tidbits from that poster. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so speaking of the Spider-Man thing, this is this is another huge thing. So like now they're saying that Spider-Man is not going to be Peter Parker, but Miles Morales, which I is which is the is. ethnic, 
you know, Spider-Man, which I have I have a love-hate relationship with this. I think it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Go somewhere different with it. We've got the Peter Parker thing already, but then it's like the hardcore fans, dude, are going to want to see Peter Parker with the Avengers. So it's yeah. one of those, like, where do you go? Yeah, because, I mean, I, you obviously said you didn't know, but so recently they've been doing a lot of stuff for Marvel where they're, like, showing alternate, like, universes or, mm-hmm. like, things where they can kind of play with the Spider-Man character. And Miles Morales is the black Spider-Man. He's a, you know, he's this black kid. And he basically is like Peter Parker. He gets bit by a spider like Peter Parker. He becomes Spider-Man. But, but it's all the, in a different universe. It's like a it's like an alternate universe. You know what I'm saying? So, so like it's Marvel like, just like spewed out they, this alternate they, universe on their own and said, hey, it's, we're going to... It's a story. It's like, the, it's called... <clears throat> uh, well, they've been doing a lot of stuff called the Edge of the Spider-Verse, which they're like alternate universes that show like different stories and different characters interacting differently. We'll get to it later in the podcast when we talk about spider I I, see, I, I I can visualize it's, what it's, you're it's pretty cool. I mean, and I like Miles Morales. I think it's a cool character. I really like the story. That is he like badass in. or is he kind of like puny and like fucking nerdy? He's a nerdy kid, but like it's <clears> cool. <throat> I like, I mean, I like where they go with it, but um, I don't know. Peter Parker is is kind of like he's a part of the story you know it's like that's that's where i'm he's at, part like, of civil war he's part of this civil like, war is what's killing it. it's like i could if you want to go that route for the avengers <clears throat> and stuff it's like cool but then hold spider-man for his solo movie like if you're gonna throw spider-man in civil war peter parker was so pivotal like yeah, yeah. like it's literally like the exclamation point for that story and it's just like oh it's so bittersweet to think right. about it yeah i don't know i mean i'm I, all for it i definitely wouldn't good. mind them doing a miles morales like solo movie you know like a standalone film that's yeah. cool with me but please just i don't know i feel like just stick with it man you know just stick with the storyline that all these hardcore nerds have been waiting for you know yeah and th- this is the other thing too now this is what concerns me slightly with the miles morales thing you almost have to do a legit origin story for you that. do you have to. you have to because no one knows who he is exactly is and it it's like him, though miles morales well, is a very yet, new character but... he just got dropped recently within the last yeah. few years Nobody who watches these films, unless you're a, a, a comic book reader, you don't know who Miles Morales is. So they're going exactly. to have so to do that to. origin story. And that, that's what I'm not liking. It's like, I thought, you know, if you bring in Peter Parker again, you skip the origin bullshit. You start mm-hmm. the movie, the first five minutes is just like the Incredible Hulk, dude. <laughs> Quick flashes, it's like, okay, boom, boom, all right, here we are. Yep. Like, now, now I'm, I'm Spider-Man, like, we're into the story. And it's like, that's what I was kind of hoping they would do. Yeah, exactly. And now it's like, damn, it's like, <clears throat> do not want another Spider-Man origin story. I don't care if it's Peter Parker, Miles Morales. Gwen Stacy, I don't care, man. Yeah. Like, just please not another full-blown origin story with Spider-Man. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. I agree. I agree. So we'll, we'll see where it goes, and we might be getting some news about this soon because Robert Downey Jr. came out and was like, yeah, guess what? Like, pay attention next Thursday. Like, a huge announcement's coming. And he basically posted that alongside his solo Iron Man poster for Age of Ultron. So it's like there might be some huge Marvel news dropping, and it could potentially be that Spider-Man casting. Probably. Could be that. Could be that. Or, they start filming in a couple months. Theory. Theory. <laughs> um, a couple months ago, Robert Downey Jr. was talking about the possibility of Iron Man 4 happening with Mel Gibson directing. Oh, yeah, that bullshit. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, he was talking about it. He's like, the only way I do Iron Man 4 is if Mel Gibson directed it. I was just like, okay. <laughs> you, can you imagine if Iron Man 4 happened, though? Like, I'd, I'd love to see it. I, I, would, I didn't I like the last two, but oh, I would love it. I, 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 three, I was, three was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> that ending, like, battle scene, it was just like, this is tur- this is a T-1000, dude. Yeah, it's like, yeah it turned into, whole, it turned suck, into just insanity. It was just wildness. I don't know. It was nonsense, but I, I'm, I'm very excited because then, you know, we can talk about it on the show and it'll be, like, very fresh. Yeah. Because so it'll yeah. drop right before we record, you know? That's the thing. So hopefully it's something good next week. So we'll, it, you know, be boom, dude. It'll be a yeah. nice big thing we can hopefully, you know, dig into. Definitely. Hey, this is a huge announcement. We'll see how huge if he's not trolling us. Yeah, right? Yeah, I'll make it a judge, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> So, so the last thing here that I got for movie news on here um, is some news with the Rocky, the new Rocky film. And um, so just kind of like last week we did with Pirates, I'm just going to kind of read through. They dropped a plot hypnosis, so cool. um, I'm kind of digging this. So um, Adonis Johnson, who's going to be played by Michael B. Jordan, never knew his famous father, world heavyweight champion Apollo Creed, who died before he was born. Still, there's no denying that boxing is his blood, so Adonis heads to Philadelphia, the site of Apollo Creed's legendary match with a tough upstart named Rocky Balboa. Once in the city of brotherly love, Adonis tracks Rocky's Stallone, and um, asked him to be his trainer. 
Despite his insistence that he is out to fight the game for good, Rocky sees in Adonis the strength and determination he had known in Apollo, the fierce rival who became his closest friend. Agreeing to take him on, Rocky trains the young fighter, even as the former champ is battling an opponent more deadly than any he faced in the ring. With Rocky in his corner, it isn't long before Adonis gets his own shot at the title, but can he develop not only the drive, but also the heart of a true fighter in time to get into the ring? Like, I think we kind of knew this is where the plot was going, but I like this that. is a perfect way to take Rocky, dude. Well, hold on. It says that you said here that <clears throat> never knew his famous father who died before he was born. So, because you can see it and think in Rocky mm-hmm. 1 or 2 when he's like frustrated and, he, and, he, and, and the wife is like, something, blah, 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 Apollo th- says a line and he throws his papers over the balcony and you can see like the kids kind of running around. I wonder if he like, I don't know, knocked her up right before he died in four, you know? Who that's, knows? That's yeah. pretty much yeah, what it yeah. sounds like they're saying. Like, you know, his he had a kid on the way, dude, and he died. The kid was born, and it's kind of just been estranged. And he tracks Rocky yeah. down, dude, wants to, like, follow in his dad's footsteps, and I Rocky's think, gonna train him. I, I think, think that's a yeah. killer a killer way to go about this, for sure. I love I, it, too. I'm, I'm really I just interested. hope they have good music, dude. Like, a good, dude, like, you know, man. training oh, music. Know. I want good music, but I also want a good, good villain. Like, I really want them to go hard <clears throat> with, like, who's he gonna face. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Because, gosh, like, that's what's all about Rocky for me, is, like, it's the villain, Drago dude. Son, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah, God. I'm How Drago. funny would that be, dude? It's like, I've come to break you again. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah can you imagine that shit, dude? To avenge my father. Oh, my <laughs> like, gosh. Yeah, like Ivan Drago's, like, he sends it to Russia or some shit, dude. You know? <laughs> but, yeah, I think it's going to be awesome, man. Yeah, like, yeah. Who um, the hell doesn't want a new What is that dropping? Movie? Oh, God. They, I, they've been filming, dude, because there was that image that leaked, or yeah. that those kids posted, rather, that were up and, at the top of the art museum. Mm-hmm. And I think yeah. Bilbo was just chilling there. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, whoa, Stallone's dude. just like, hey. Yeah, <laughs> like, so that that's pretty cool. So yeah, they they definitely had to have been filming, and I mean maybe they've wrapped already. Still on directing? Sure. He's not. He actually he is not directing nor writing. So he totally stepped back, let someone else take the reins, and you know he's. I'm okay. sure he contributed, but he's not. He's yeah. not like a focal point like yeah. he's been in the past. Okay, um, I can do. But that. yeah, dude, hell yeah, I'm I'm excited for it. I think it's a perfect way to take it. And um, absolutely, yeah, definitely. And, you know, it's cool, man. It's pretty cool to see this continue. I just hope it's not like. Karate Kid, uh, the remake with Will oh, Smith's son, God. with Jackie Chan training him. You know what I mean? I just don't want something like that. That was a yeah. trash. I movie, want something man. like raw and original. Like, it's like kind of like like a John Wick. It's like man, that was so good. Like I want more. You know? Yeah. yeah just just as long as they I keep think the it heart, will, dude. Kick ass training segment. You know what I mean? And like keep the same heart, dude. Like the Rocky movies, man. Like they make you cry, dude. Yeah. 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 Like, they oh, make yeah. you cry, man. Like when you see that triumphant, you know, ending, dude. Even in the end of one, dude. Like. You know what I mean? Like, he loses, but it's just, like, it's so emotional, dude. Yeah. The music hits, and they just grab each other in the ring. You're like, oh, my God, dude. Like, yeah. it took him the distance. Yeah, it's all you he know, wanted, man. Just, oh, dude. Yeah. It's all, it's, it's all he wanted, dude, you know? He's <laughs> like, never, I don't care, I don't retreat, care if I lose. Never surrender, That's dude. That's right. Never, no retreat, no surrender. That's right, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever taken quite the distance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so good, dude. It's all about doing your best. Bro. It's about doing your best. <laughs> dude, I can't wait, man. I'm, I'm like, so for it. <laughs> so all right, we're gonna get into something for just a little bit here before we move to comic books. Just a touch base, and uh, <laughs> you got it. You got him. You got him going. You got oh him man, going. there's about doing your best. It's about doing your best. I don't know about dance. I don't know. You always know. Oh shit. So, there, there's a huge, <laughs> there's a huge effect, dude. That, like the internet's having on film, and it, there's so much positiveness to this, and we all know the positiveness. We're not gonna get into all that shit. <laughs> There's a lot that it's like ruining for film. And I think, and I, I listed a couple things here. We could just kind of touch base on some of this. But one of the things, dude, that it's killing, man, it's like the magic of cinema is being destroyed because now that like people are leaking stuff and everybody's on this like need to know basis, they want to know everything before they're putting their asses in a theater seat. And it's like, dude, you're you're ruining the entire experience. Like, you yep. can sit down and say, hey, it's yeah. a good movie afterwards, but like if you have Jurassic Park, dude, and you see every shot of all the dinosaurs and, like, those epic scenes when you first see Brachiosaurus, you do not get that theatrical experience anymore. Right. It's just like, oh, yeah, I saw this already. Cool. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, think about every epic movie you've seen. Like, when I was a kid, seeing Jurassic Park for the first time, you know, going into the movie, you have no idea what you're expecting, you know? And yeah. the, the, the previews back then, the trailers didn't give away that much. Yeah. They were very basic. They were like, okay, you know, here's a few things to kind of give you a hint of what the movie's about, but it never gives away all the good stuff, all the goodies. You know, mm-hmm. you don't see all that stuff. That's like what nowadays, 
Yeah, Jurassic Every, World was a nice trailer. That's that's what I liked about it because it, it really like went back to that old school where it's like we're not going to give away everything. Well, they yeah. did they did blatantly give away like that hybrid dinosaur. Like, right, I know but, what it looks like. But they like. didn't give away oh, any. Yeah, they didn't just... give away any battle scenes. They didn't give away any like. No. You know, we still don't know exactly what's going to happen and and how the dinosaurs are going to be unleashed in the park and all yeah, this other. Yeah. We still don't know that stuff, which is what I like. Yeah, but all these other movies, like they show these good, like the good parts, like in the in the trailer. Yeah, and then you get all these kids on the internet who are like leaking all this information they find, and it and in a lot of cases it ruins the movie because the director will like change the script. Well, that's the other thing, dude. You know? It's like stuff will start getting out, and then yeah, people start changing stories, dude. Like that Tarantino dude with the Hateful Eight, like literally almost shut production down on that movie entirely. And it's yep. th- it, it's it's out of hand, dude. Like it's completely it's ridiculous. out of hand. It's like sit back, dude, and like all these you know people, man. They get off on this shit, dude, by like leaking stuff out, and then like all, of course all the movie sites, dude. I got to be the first one to publish this. Check out the latest leak for Star Wars Episode Seven. Check God. out the latest leak for you know fucking Avatar Three, whatever. When all this stuff comes, yeah. it's like everybody's just trying to get their clicks. Everyone wants clicks, dude. It's all about clicking on links. Uh, I was gonna. I forgot to text you guys earlier. IGN, I, I was on Facebook, uh, IGN posted up, because they're always posting something. They said, hey, uh, so there's new Star Wars rumors, and they had, like, a link. And it's, and I went in, I didn't go to the link, I went to the comments, and people were like, like, oh, is, is Star Wars, the, are these rumors ruining Star Wars? You know, like, like these, yeah. and, and then they had a link, and it's, I didn't want to, I don't want to hear the rumors, so I, I clicked on the comments, and they're like, no, IGN, you're fucking ruining it. Like, yeah, you're ruining yeah. Star Wars. Yeah, well, it is. I mean, exactly. it's like it's, it a two, it's a two-way street, dude. It's like the people that are putting it out there, they're fucking it up. And then the, pe- the people that are promoting this stuff even more, yeah. it's messing it up even more. And it's just like, Jesus Christ, dude. Like, why why do we have to be, like, buried in shells for yeah. three years waiting for a movie to come out? And we can't just, like, enjoy the ride and, like, you know, enjoy this film. Yeah, I mean, and... and, and... I liked, you know, because, like, Kevin Smith, like, visited the set, and then he, like, gave a statement on it. But it was, I loved how he did it, because he didn't give anything away. Yeah. He literally went on the set, and then everyone's like, oh, what happened? What happened? Give us all the details. Give us all the insider information. He probably had to sign an NDA. all he said, yeah, 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 but, like, all he said was, you're gonna be in for a treat. Like, I literally (laughs) stepped on that set, and I cried. Yeah. And that's, that's all he said, and that's all I needed to hear. I don't need to hear him being like, well, this character was here, and that actor was here, and this person's playing this role, and that person's going to do this. Like, I don't need to know that. Yeah. Like, give me the, the list of characters or the, the, the actors who are going to play in the movie. That's fine, but don't give me plot details, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't want to like, know don't everything. Spoil it, dude. Exactly. It's just... I'm, I'm, dude, I'm seriously surprised you know, at how Disney it's... or J.J. Abrams has even kept this, like... Unlock. Yeah. If the I didn't read the rumors, but say someone did, and the rumors are are true. It's like or are are not true. Well, I heard it's like, I God, dude in this I've, day of age. I've like, read God. a few articles about the Star Wars like <clears throat> filming of Episode Seven, and apparently every single set was like level five security, like oh, up I'm the sure. ass. Really? Like you don't walk on that set unless you're like officially supposed to be there. Yeah. And you yeah. don't leave that set without being probably searched is like, like a crazy you know phones like, taken away yeah like all your data like <clears throat> probably wiped clean or just monitored like you have to before you can even go on the set you probably have to check in your electronic devices and oh, things yeah. like that so like God dude, that's, that's why insane. like they're they are their security levels are extreme and well, and it sucks that their... it, it sucks that it has to get to that point you know it sucks that they have to waste extra resources and money to hire you know a bunch security of security firms, guards yeah. to like oh, yeah. to to keep the place under wraps cuz you have all these assholes who are going to cuz everybody you know, wants their 15 minutes of fame dude yeah. exactly like, I'm they want to put that out there it's yeah. like dude you know what fuck you yeah, they want you know, they probably want probably don't the, even you know, fuck about star they wars they want the page you know? views they want people to come yeah, to their page that's all it is, you know? dude it's just like everyone wants to be a, a, a fucking celebrity dude it's like yeah. well i broke this story on this we're the first ones to drop this well it's like all about this urgency dude it's like you said it best dude it's like even just like facebook now like facebook went from being like everybody pissing and moaning and crying about life and now it's everybody just posting nothing but like seven second clips it's like check this out wow this is fucking crazy holy shit but it's like what is this, dude? Yeah, yeah. memes, memes up the ass. It's just, you know, everybody yeah. wants their fifteen minutes. Yep. Yeah, and it's like, and it's it totally sucks, dude. It totally sucks that people are pushing this stuff out because that's where the internet's killing it. It's like before, yeah. this is what you got, dude. Like a movie trailer come out, 
you would not even know sometimes a movie's even happening. Right. You'd be going to another movie and you're like, oh shit, dude, they're making a, a new Indiana Jones? Oh hell yeah, that's awesome. Then there, maybe there's an article in a magazine you read about. They talk a little bit about the film. Yep. Then it's just like, I'm excited. I'm going to go see the movie just based on that. And the way that the internet and the film industry in general just like morphed the entire like clusterfuck of everything. It's like, now it's like movie trailer one, movie trailer two, three, four, five, six. And it's like 15 minutes total of footage winds up being shown before yep. you see the movie. There's <clears throat> magazine articles. There's shit leaking all over the internet, dude. All the stars are doing like interviews. Every single time they do an interview for anything, it's just like question, 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 question. Yeah. All this crazy need to know basis, dude. And it's like some of that stuff is good. But when you're giving away the movie and stuff, like, it sucks, dude. Like, yeah. when you sit yeah. somebody down, all I want to hear is this, straight up. Just like, yeah, yeah, it's going to be great. You guys you guys are in for a ride. You know what I mean? And it's like a lot right. of people try to do that, but it's like, nobody needs, why do you got to, like, dig in? You hear some of these questions people ask, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah. hey, so what can we expect from blah, blah, blah. Like, they're really just digging to get everything something is for like, their website. Everything's such a fast, like, society now. It's this reality-based everything. Everyone has to be in the loop, you know? Mm. Yeah, it's We nuts. have to know everything about every person's life, and then... Like, like everyone's a celebrity, dude. Like thanks reality TV. <laughs> yeah, like even football, dude. Like football's reality TV essentially. It really you know, is. How I mean, many likes can I get on this, or how many know, thumbs up oh, can I like, get on I'll this? I'll post yeah. this status this and see how much Falcon, how much controversy you know? I can get on this status, or and how much controversy I can get for this quote I put in this magazine. And like <clears> everyone just wants to be recognized. Everyone wants to be in the in the spotlight. And it's just like leave the spotlight for the for the Hollywood actors and and that entire like culture. And just sit back and enjoy it. Stop trying to be in, involved in it, you know? Yeah. And that's what everyone tries to do is like, oh, you know, well, I have the power to do this and I can be a part of it and I can interact with these people. And it's like, shut up. Like, just sit back and enjoy the film. Yeah, enjoy dude. the TV show. And then after it comes out, then, <clears throat> like, start doing yeah. all the interviews about the movie and start getting in Yeah, it. get the bigger details about stuff. You know? Like, what was it like filming this scene? It's like, yeah. oh, cool, I'm relating now. Like the bonus footage you see on a DVD, you know? Yeah, totally. That's what I want to see is the bonus footage after I've watched the movie. I don't want to see it before. Like, Yeah, it's yeah. it's so stupid. It's crazy stuff, dude. Like, because people, people just don't have patience anymore, dude. Like, everybody no, is don't. so psychotically OCD, man. It's just like, and I, dude, we're all guilty. I mean, we all check our phones like crazy. But I mean, dude, it's just like, Boom, 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 boom. It's like, oh my God, this just dropped, this just dropped, this just dropped. Read this rumor, read this rumor. And it's just like, dude, before before all of that, like now it's like this big bloated picture in your brain. Yeah. And it's just the whole movie industry, dude. It's just like, it's rough, dude. And I yeah. something I wanted to touch base on too that I didn't put in here is specifically with horror movies. Like the horror genre is kicked into the ground because now people are not scared of legitimate creepy moments in film, dude. Like, people... Dude, I've seen so many people bitching about The Babadook. I'm telling you right now, that is one of the eeriest movies to come out in forever. But people hate it because it's not this every five seconds. Like... Yeah. It's like, that's what people want, or dude. Like, they want to sit in a theater and a dog barks really fucking loud and, like, this really quiet scene. Like, oh! It's like, that's not yeah. fear, man. Like, right. that's not yeah. fear. They, they rely on, like, yeah. cut, quick cut scenes. Like, oh, the woman's here. Opens the... Opens, like, the mirror, you know, cabinet. Closes it. And it's like... You know, like yeah. some shit. And even, even if there's nothing there, it's yeah. just like, yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. like, Jesus. It's like anybody can do that. Yeah. yeah. It's you like some, it some fucking story. Some Christopher Nolan, like, gong sound, like, like yeah. you know, it's so, it's, it make you jump. You know, it's like all this jump scare crap. And it's that's, like, why, that's why I like the con. I didn't like, see the ba- Babadook. I want to see it. Oh, I ordered um, that. Dude, I pre ordered that. I haven't seen it yet, but, like, I just I'm I need to right see now, it, man. Dude. I need to see it. A plus top grade quality horror film right there. Yeah. Like, Top of the crop, man. Well, Amazing. And, and, like, you just go back and you see, like, go back and watch Halloween. Just the first one. That movie relies on zero jump scares. There's nothing yeah. in that movie that makes me, like, jump out of my seat. If Except anything, for one I... scene that's appropriate and it scares the shit out of you, dude. When Michael Myers pops out of the closet and grabs the boyfriend. Oh, yeah. It's an appropriate scare. Right, You're right. supposed to be scared of Michael Myers. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But, you like, know? the rest of the film is I'm scared because I'm, like curling up in my seat like this because I'm like it's where the is at- he? <laughs> the atmosphere is like Even freaking Halloween me out 3. like when is he gonna show up where is he what is he yeah, doing dude. I can't see him oh they shot him and he fell out the window like now he's gone where is he what is he doing like those are the things I want to think about when I'm watching a horror movie I don't yeah. want to think about like oh my god when is this like crow gonna call like Rah! like you well, know it's scary even, uh, Halloween know, 3 and, and The Conjuring is the same thing you know, yeah. like a good atmosphere, like how when, when they go into that scared town. Scared me, like I, yeah. I oh. And the Conjuring hit it good because that movie is another movie, dude. Like it had bangs, yeah. but it was all bangs that were supposed to scare you. Like it wasn't this cheap shit, dude. Where you're walking, and it's just like, 
a loud noise for no reason because it's like a lady turns the corner, it's like, yeah, it's like no, dude, yeah. like there was bangs because you're in a haunted house, dude. Like doors are slamming, man. Like clocks are going off and stuff. Like it's appropriate because you're supposed to be scared of those things happening already. Yeah, yeah. it it's, gives you that feeling. Like if you you're in a house and that happened to you, I'm gonna jump, dude. If I'm walking through my house and it's quiet and a door slams. Like, and it's a haunted house. Like, dude, like, that's an appropriate scare. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, there's... Oh, my God, dude. The Devil Inside, man. One of the... Jesus, dude. That movie pissed me off beyond belief, man. But there's that scene where they're walking on the sidewalk, and it's just, like, so calm. And a dog jumps attached to a leash, dude, and just, like, like, at the fence. And it's just, like, dude, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. This is not fear, dude. It's all... Dude, like yeah, you are saying... Just... I think you said it last week, maybe. Like, it's just all about atmosphere. Like, you want to make that that scary just tone like that just you want the whole movie to have that eerie scary tone the whole time like uh one of my favorites is the omen oh yeah dude. there's no scenes in that movie that would be like jump out of your seat you know it's all like eerie like you just don't feel comfortable yeah you know and that's what i like Like, that's what it should be is like uncomfortable feeling not jumping out of your seat because you have a a damn you know pop out thing yeah and i don't see i just don't see the fun in that dude but again, like we talked about, dude, I can't they'll, watch make, they'll make these movies for a couple million bucks, and people, people yeah, spend that, a shitload of money. Well, that's it. Like, yeah. People spend a shitload of money. I can't see horror movies in theaters anymore, man. No. I just can't do it. Like, I literally, it could only happen <clears throat> by following certain directors, dude. Like, when The Conjuring was coming, I was stoked, because I'm not the biggest fan of, like, Insidious. Like, I dug it, but I wasn't like, oh my god, it was the scariest thing ever. Like, a lot of people tripped. But, dude... The director, like, James Wan, knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Like, the guy knows how to, like, create atmosphere. So when The Conjuring came, I was like, I trust this guy as a horror film director. Mm-hmm. And he made another movie that I love, dude, called Dead Silence. I don't know if you guys have seen that. I've seen the uh, the box cover. So I, uh, that the... film, yeah, dude, that movie is awesome. Really? So, like, oh, dude, like, straight up, just, like, all everything else. This guy just knows <clears> the atmosphere. And it's like, good, dude, give me some good atmosphere. Yeah. He crushed it, dude. Like, The Conjuring is, like, his godfather, dude. Like, that's his pinnacle of horror right there like he, he nailed it yeah mm-hmm. it was really good yeah yeah so well yeah i don't have much more to add to that i mean i, I really <laughs> at some point i would really love to just dive into this really deep you know and like really get into some stuff but yeah, i just wanted to really, brush the surface with some of this we stuff really here. should we really should like spend one episode just kind of like the bulk of it on this topic because it i think involves, it's because it involves video games too oh yeah oh yeah Big it's time. all media you know it's it's it it's just annoying. it gets really mm-hmm. annoying after a while to just have everything ruined. Like you just, I can't go on Facebook sometimes without seeing something because some asshole posted something about it. And even though I don't click on the link, the title of the link is like what gives it away, exactly, or dude. the picture they post, like the screen cap. You know, it's something that gives something away. And yeah, I, it's and like, you, I, you can piece it together, dude. Like people are not dumbasses. Yeah, it's even just if you're like, not saying it, you're still saying it. Yeah. It's just, God. yeah, we we could, if we could do away with all that shit, dude, like. We got to remind people, dude, like why it's fun to go to the movies and stuff. Yeah, man. it's like people people are losing what the fun in a film is. Like it yeah. just it's, it's a dying art almost for for the it's fans. Very true. Yeah, you know, and it sucks for the filmmakers, dude, who bust their ass and these actors who crush it, dude, to really want to deliver that experience. Like when they read that script and it's like this is how this is meant to be seen, and their art that they're creating can't be seen like that. You know, like there's movies that have been completely completely spoiled for me, dude. Like the first time I saw World War Z, I hated it. Like, there was stuff I loved, but, like, there was so much that was ruined about that movie leading up to it to where, like, I couldn't enjoy it. And I would have enjoyed it a lot more had I not known so much. Right. Yeah. You know? But, I mean, it is what it is. It's just you got to do your best to avoid a lot of that stuff. And That's what I'm doing with Star Wars. Like, the early stages of casting and everything, I was very, like, focused. Exactly. (laughs) Because at that point, like, I remember when Star Wars Episode One came out, the rumor mills that were going around, none of it panned out to be true. Like, it just was, like, just chatter. And so for this one, the first couple months when everything was coming out, I was like, all right, I'm going to focus in on this because I know all these rumors are going to be bullshit. So I'm just going to focus on like the casting and all that. And then, and now that it's done filming, that's that's when I'm kind of like, okay, I'm going to step back because now yeah. the rumors that come out are going to be a lot more reliable. Yeah, it's going to hold more merit and it's yeah. like, eh. You know, earlier it's like, okay, the film hasn't even been made, so we don't know who to trust. But now that it's done filming, it's in post-production – there's yeah. so, there's some jerk offs like in film school that are like, you know, watching them edit this or something as like a class oh, project yeah. or some crap. Dude, oh, people, yeah. people are like some intern. To spoil this shit, dude. You know, like, some intern at Lucasfilm is like, 
in his with his little notebook, you know, like yeah, watching the editing process, and Still he's gonna leak it on, tit, dude. Like, yeah, like he's gonna go on Reddit and just ruin it for everyone. But I'll, right now, dude, I'm saying it right now for all of us, we will never, ever on this podcast ever at Nerf Herders Podcast Incorporated <laughs> ever talk about any kind of spoiler shit. We will never spoil a movie. Nope. And if we do a big discussion like when, you know, Age of Ultron comes out, we'll probably do a whole podcast on the movie. Like, we'll tell you up front, dude. Like, we're talking about the movie openly. If you've seen it, stay. But, like, we're not we're not going to spoil yeah. shit, man. We're all about, like, preserving the magic of cinema. Like, exactly. all of yeah. us. Exactly. Yeah. So. Well said. Yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> Well said. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it annoys me too, yeah. man. It's we, just... we respect the merit that, you know, Hollywood is man, you know. Yeah, absolutely. The, 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 it's why we're here. Yeah, dude. We're we, fucking we movie love lovers, movies, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, let's get into some comic books. So, a couple <clears throat> couple good ones came out this week. So, um, did you get a chance to check out Darth Vader too? Um, I did not. Okay. I bought it though. I won't. I won't. I won't drop bombs. Then. <laughs> um, I picked it up. I only had time to read Spider Gwen. Okay, so I'll, I'll talk real so, quick here on Darth Vader too. Um. <clears throat> It, it it still continues smoothly off the first one. I I dug it. I think um, you know it, it held a little bit more together. Was just like all right, like this is kind of the Darth Vader that I'm used to. He was a little bit more, um, you know, being sneaky and doing his thing. There was there was a couple spots where I was again I was just kind of like this doesn't feel Darth Vader esque. But then it like totally redeemed itself by the end, and I'm just like okay, I get it now. So. It's still continuing. I, you know, I think we need to get the next Star Wars ones going to see how this is all intertwining because you can tell it's definitely these are running at the same time together. Yeah, Princess but, Leia comes out next month, so yeah. So I'm really excited to see where that's yeah, going to. Okay. But um, I'm still I'm still not to the point where I'm completely blown away with these comics. Like they're just like okay, it's a decent read, mm-hmm. but I'm not to the point where it's just like yeah, dude, like I'm really into this right now. It it so far they've entertained me, <clears throat> but. Um, compared to Dark Horse, they, they don't hold water to me. I mean, I love. Um, I wonder if Marvel's gonna have a booth at Anaheim. I'm I'm sure they yeah, I'm sure yeah. they'll do something. Yeah. I'm sure they'll like, do something because I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but to yeah. me, like Dark Horse, like the stories they've put out, like um, I don't know. It just it seems like Dark Horse just had such a better grasp on what Star Wars is. Even the expanded universe yeah. stories were good, and. You know, like my favorite story is the Dark Empire. You know, <clears throat> where they have Luke as the villain, and I just thought like those kind of things are so cool. And these more these Marvel stories are a lot more animated. You know, it's like yeah, yeah. it doesn't have the same tone as the the trilogy does to me. Yeah, and, and they're the trying to they're trying to put the story in the middle of where the trilogy was, but they don't have the same tone as the trilogy. That, and that's and where that's I'm kind of like kinda I'm like out of it. You know. And that, that's what was cool with Dark Horse, because Dark Horse was just kind of like, we're just going to make up our own stories, we're just going to do our thing, and now with this, they had a lot of pressure, because it's like, we legitimately got to meld this, you know, between episodes four and five. So, I mean, it, you know, the bar is already set high, and it's just, it's it's not delivering home yet. And I'm right. hoping I'm hoping these start to improve a little bit, where you start to feel, like, more into it, but it's definitely not everything I was hoping it was going to be yet. I agree, yeah. So, I mean, I... I, I I'll keep on a lookout because I know they're also releasing a book about the like the last Padawan, or okay. something it's called. Yeah, because um, the guy from um, the Rebel show, yeah, doing his story. Yeah, I can't so remember his name now. I'll, I mean, I'll read that, and I'm, I'm hoping they'll eventually kind of start getting something better. But I mean, that's kind of Marvel anyway. Like the 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 recent, I guess, span of Marvel books that have come out have been just very animated, very like upbeat, and like. Not a very dark tone at all. Like yeah. they've probably they've left that for like DC to kind of tackle. Yeah. And totally. I mean, I love it in the films of Marvel. Like I love that it's not this like crazy, you know, dark ass <laughs> crap. Like I like that it's more fun to watch. Yeah, absolutely. But with Star Wars, I don't know. It's it's so far. I agree. I'm. Yeah, it's, it's there, but it's not hitting home, dude. Like, yeah. It's not the nail in the coffin yet, as they would say in NBA Jam. <laughs> um, he can't buy a bucket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the third, the third Mortal Kombat came out, um, and I'm digging this Mortal Kombat stuff, man. Like I think the Mortal Kombat stuff is like I'm really intrigued in this because it's really brutal, it's violent, dude. Like it's it's what I love about graphic comics, and it's fun, dude. And um, you know, it's continuing the story with Kotal Khan and stuff, and was really cool in this. And I'll, I'll wait till you read it, dude. And I'm, I just saw the cover. And I dude, was the like, cover's awesome. Like, yeah, dude. There, there's, a, there's a showdown, dude, between Goro and Kotal Khan, that's, man. That's why I was no like, way. that's why I was super it's pumped, cool. dude, because I saw, I didn't even, like, I just looked at it really quickly when I grabbed it off the shelf to put it in my, like, stack, and I was just like, 
Goro. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like <laughs> Prince of Shokan. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's, it's like, really and then cool, I just man. immediately like think of like when he crushes Johnny Cage's glasses, dude. He's like, yeah, dude. Those were five hundred dollars sunglasses, asshole. Yeah. <laughs> and then fucking like Van Dam kicks him off the cliff. Like, who comes back, dude? John, Johnny Cage finally makes an appearance now. <laughs> really? So he's, he's Johnny oh, Cage. Yes. Johnny Cage shows up at the end. I was just like, oh. hell yeah, dude. Dude, I and need to get Rain, into- Rain shows up in there, so they're they're starting to bring some more people into the mix. And well, dude, this weekend, fun, do, they, really do they do they make their outfits look badass, like more modernized? Or is it more like? Yeah. Dude, classic I, ninja out no they're, 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 they're definitely like up the ante on some of them and stuff and i dig it dude and like something i didn't talk about this at all yet which is really cool is like uh scorpion is not like scorpion how we see him like okay. he's, he's going by you know his name and he's just like this bearded vigilante who's training um kenshi's son cool it's like it's really neat and they're like right. they haven't really tap danced really deep into that yet yeah. you kind of oh, get these snippets God. i need to get these man why am i like i'm like slacking slacker, on it. i'm slacking dude. it's it's cool man. I'm, I'm really digging these dude like it's cool and it's mortal Kombat, man well this weekend i have a lot of time just like to do whatever i want and know? i want to so i'm just yeah, gonna read like a lot because i have i have dude, a stack yeah. about that big <laughs> of like comics that i've just been like <laughs> catch up time dude i haven't touched dude i get home and i put them in the stack and i get you're like I bought like four <laughs> copies of Star Wars and I was so pissed I threw it against the wall and I'll do that to my comics man. <laughs> but I bought four four copies because I need to like preserve them for yeah, sure. You cover D yeah. variants. <laughs> yeah, I'm a freak, man. I like I I put them in the I bag them and board them and I just it's like. They will never see air again. Yeah, dude. Yeah. They will. They will never see sunlight. Like I make sure that they don't see sunlight. Like because I don't want the cover. I don't want the cover to fade, dude. He's getting it back from like uh, the place that grades them and shit. He's probably like nine point eight, nine point eight. Come yeah. on, baby. Come on, come on, come on. Nine point seven. Yeah. <laughs> No, I feel you though, dude. I'm the same way. They're all sitting nice and nestled right there, covered there you up. Go, man. Yeah. Yep. That's, how you, um, that's how you do it. Spider Gwen came out. I thought it was last week. It was this week. I picked it up today and read it. Yeah. I, I, dude, it was pretty sweet. I really it. Oh, yeah, I heard I it. I loved really it. Good. I'm so happy they did this because, like, like I was telling you earlier, they do this Edge of the Spider Verse, and one of the stories they brought in because it's like each issue they kind of introduce a new Spider character. So they have like. All these different dudes coming into the mix who are from alternate like universes and stories. And what's cool is they use a lot of the same characters in each universe. So in one one universe, like uh, Mary Jane, Gwen Stacy, Peter Parker, Flash, like they'll be in different roles. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And for um, you just read Spider Gwen number one. You didn't read the origin of her, right? Yeah, I, I don't okay. know. Okay, I just read that first page. Of kind of like was a quick, quick. Like, yeah, they give you that like recap. real quick. Yeah, so, yeah. So I was kind of like, okay, okay. It's cool, man. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I loved it. I thought I really liked how like it was super. I don't know, like punk rock rebellious. Yeah. You know, and lots the color of, scheme of the art, dude. Yeah, all dude. The, like, all the neons, all and, like, neon, like it's neon so greens, neat pinks, looking. like weird. I, I'll, it reminds me of this uh, this game called uh, Infamous Second Son. Here's a punk rock chick okay. who is dedicated to like her powers. She's like a superhero. It's mm-hmm. all neon, like all neon. Oh, okay, then. Yeah, it's 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 weird. It's like total weird that you say that. It's dude. cool. It's pretty. It's pretty colors mm-hmm. to look at, dude. Like the cover is just like mm-hmm. it just sucks you in, dude. Just like okay. I, I really yeah. like how they gave her like Gwen Stacy kind of like they really spent a lot of time developing her as her own person, like aside yeah. from Peter Parker, you know. Yeah. Because she acts like I mean. In the story, I guess, like, the city calls her Spider-Woman. Right. But she's not Spider-Woman. Like, there's another book about that. But um, she's, like, her own thing. She has her own sense of humor. She has, like, her own tone about how she interacts and, like, yeah. does her things. And, like, she's, like, a punk rock chick. She, she plays drums in a band with Mary Jane. Really? And they're called the Mary Janes. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's just really cool. They're, like, playing a club, you know, and then the bad guy busts in and she, like, kicks ass. But... It's just, I don't it's know, fun, I really, dude. I thought it, it was a good... It's, the outfit's killer, dude. I love the I outfit. I really like the design for it, because mm-hmm. it's like, it's basically a white hoodie with, like, black pants and a little bit of, like, intertwining of the colors, and then, like, the interior is, yeah. like, the classic Spider-Man look, but it's all done in neon, and, like, it's, yeah. it's so cool. Really? That's Very badass. cool. I'm, I'm actually really excited mm-hmm. to see people do that cosplay, like... Oh, yeah, we're going to probably get a ton like, of that at Wizard World and stuff, I'm for really, sure. I want to see some people do Spider-Gwen cosplay, because yeah. it's really cool. She's even got, like turquoise like neon turquoise like flats on like a girl would wear you know yeah Yeah. it's so cool but it just goes so well with the suit i don't know i thought i thought it was a good first issue yeah i I like Um, it dude and like it's cool they brought in vulture so it's like yeah are they gonna keep like all classic spider-man villains now that's what i I, which is really neat you know i I heard they're gonna i heard they're gonna bring in like kingpin and like some other 
yeah. iconic people. So. Well, didn't they mention they mentioned Frank Castle in there? Right? Yeah. Did Frank Castle pop in for a second? Really? Yeah. yeah. I was just like, oh, okay, right on. That's cool. Wow. So it's 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 cool, man. I I think you would dig it. Like I think like us as comic book fans and stuff, and like I know you read too, but like this is such a fun new, brand new kind of like fresh thing that I don't think Marvel has anything running like this right now. And for all no. all the women, dude, who are looking for someone, like, you know, they got, like, their female Thor now that everybody's excited about. But, if, if like, for female comic book readers who really want something cool, or if you're just starting to get into comics and you want something to start with, like, dude, this is a really good comic, I think, to, like, for kids to get into, man. Like, if you're a young girl or something, you want to have, like, a superhero to look up to. Like, I think the Spider-Man thing's a really neat thing. Like, yeah. I, I think it's really yeah, cool. Yeah, it's cool. And see, this is, this is where I think, like, they're doing a proper female hero. Because they did the whole female Thor thing, and I read it, and I didn't like it, because I think Thor is Thor, yeah. you know? And I you know, I don't like how they were just like, oh, Thor, you're no longer worthy, and then some random shadow woman just picks up the hammer <laughs> like she's worthy. Yeah, It's yeah. like, who's making you worthy, and why do they have to make... Like, I just don't understand why they couldn't just create... A new character in the Thor universe to be a hero. That's what bugged me. It's like, like don't don't take this and be like, all right, women, like here's your person, but it's like based off a guy. It's like it's like starting a comic, and being like, here's Adam. Oh, you want a woman comic? You're gonna break his rib out. Here's Eve. Here's your Eve comic. It's <laughs> yeah. like yeah, it's not really hitting you know, home, dude. It, like this it, is cool. Yeah. Make you know, just make a, a separate character, start him from scratch, give him an origin, and and build him up to be a, a really great hero. And that's what I like about this is that it's like they completely separate this story from any other Spider-Man story so it can yeah. be good, you know? I, yeah, it's, it's cool. You, you'll dig it, dude. Yeah. Uh, yeah I think I, you would dig it. I think that's how... It, I know I, I mean, want to pick up the uh, Civil Wars and, and the Mortal Kombat, so... Dude, Mortal Kombat's are awesome. I, I got, like... The artwork is up. killer. That, that's all I've it looked is, at is dude. the artwork. The artwork is fun, dude. Yeah, really that cool. one you showed me with, uh, I think it was, like, Ra- Raiden. Raiden, dude. Yeah, Raiden, Raiden yeah. on the front. Dude, it's killer. Yeah. So, yeah, dude, that, that's it for comic books, man. Like... Yeah, it's cool, man. I'm looking forward to Spider Gwen too. So, oh yeah, that, that'll be something to talk about as soon as that comes out for sure. Uh, what do you got for video games this week, Bone Daddy? Hey, real quick, look at this. Look at this cover, man. Is that cool? <laughs> or what? Arkham Knight, dude. Yeah, fucking. Okay, I have yeah. a feeling we're gonna talk about Arkham Knight right now. Yes, we are. <laughs> but first, we're gonna talk about Mortal Kombat X. I don't even have that written down. Oh. I totally remembered it. I want to talk about Mortal Kombat. <clears throat> they sh- they showed they showed a video today, man. It was like God, like five hours ago oh, of okay. like I seen this. Of like brutalities, which kind of goes what you're saying about the internet just kind of showing a little too much. Yeah. I think I I I I didn't want to see it, but I was like, I, I want to see it, you know. You to, um, but the brutalities, <laughs> oh my god, dude! Like, there's some new characters, man. I don't even know who they are, but this one guy, like the artwork, this is so sick, you know. This is so like evil, and this guy's got this, it's uh, got this handle thing, and it's like this. Uh, the sword, you know, and it's got teeth at the end. And one of his brutalities, man, he's fucking <clears throat> sticks this guy, right? I don't know, like female sub zero say. And he starts fucking carving the guy in half and his fucking his body <laughs> his body just you know? <laughs> and it was like brutality. And that's just one and they kept on showing these different ones, man, like right like Raiden and shit. Yeah. So Quan Chi, man, he threw like a portal. He sucked Raiden into the portal, dude, and then the portal appeared like portal went away, then the portal reappeared above Quan Chi's head. And it's like whoosh, all this like raining blood, dude, on Quan Chi, and My then the head, God, and so then the head cool, drops man. like on the ground. It's like here comes the fucking skull, you know. <laughs> Um, oh, oh my god! I gotta dude. wait for this game. I just think of like wait. I just think of like Freddy Krueger when like Johnny Depp's pulled into the mattress and then just yeah. blood, <laughs> blood bath, dude. Uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Period. I was gonna. <laughs> I was yeah. I was gonna get the order. I didn't. I didn't feel like spending sixty dollars on a game, so I got uh, Walking Dead season two from Telltale. Coming in should oh, be should be coming in tomorrow with, yeah. with every episode on it. They released yeah it like, oh, yeah okay, like cool, the, cool. like the five thing. So I don't know. I, I was like I didn't want that because like whatever I wanted that it? I wanted the order. What? How much was it? No, I it, well it's, I I'm a member of GameFly, so GameFly you oh, pay so you're renting it in. yeah I pay I gotcha. eighteen bucks a month seventeen ninety nine eighteen dollars a month and you can rent like unlimited but like. By the time you ship it to them and they ship one back and then, like, say I want the order and the order is like, well, we're extremely low on copies. Like, everybody's got it right now. We're going to we're gonna give you the next one in line. Well, the next one in line was also low on copies. So they give you the next one. And that one was fucking low on copies. And then they give you <laughs> fucking Walking Dead. And that was, like, highly available in copies. And I was like, okay, okay. fuck. 
right. Thanks, so Gamefly. thanks for my fourth. I'm just going to kind of read this out. Currently, I'm currently about to play Walking Dead season two. Uh, achieve the platinum and give my thoughts by you know next Thursday. Uh, I played the first two episodes on PS3. Um, uh, I did, and uh, how it ends uh, with what's her face. Um, it, it's there's some moments, okay. And but I never did uh, be, get the whole thing just because they released every episode every other month. So I was like, fuck, I'll just wait for PS4 for the whole shebang and just knock it out like yeah. I did with a Wolf Among Us. Uh, PlayStation Plus users, uh, you PlayStation Plus, you, uh, and when you get a PS4 and you want to play online, you have to become a PS Plus uh, member now, like kind of like Xbox. To yeah, be you gotta online. pay that. You gotta pay that it yearly. Is, <clears throat> Xbox is sixty dollars a year. PS Plus is fifty dollars a year, and you get. Uh, two free games every month yep. for like PS3 or PS4. Like you always get games no matter That's what it is. Deal. Yeah. Um, so PS Plus users last week were in disarray about whether or not they were getting the free version of Drive Club, which came out last September. And they said this game was supposed to come out in 2013. They delayed it to 2014, September. They said you can buy the game outright, $60. Bam, you get everything. Boom, sort of everything. And uh, or you, for PS Plus users, you get like a, a good chunk of the game. To play for free, and then if you want to buy it, then you buy it. And I'm me, I'm like, oh fuck yeah, like I don't, I'll play it. And it, like they're like, okay, hold on, guys, like our servers, fuck, oh shit, like we got to delay this, you know. So they came out like last week, and they're like, well, we don't really know if this is gonna be happening anymore, guys. Sorry, fans. But then it came out today that that yes, they Sony is gonna put it out for free and are working hard on it, but mentioned no specifics, which means. Uh, your servers suck ass. <laughs> uh, it's ancient Mayan code. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Obviously, the, or- the Order 1886 came out last Friday. I did not play it due to the fact that the game is basically a one-time playthrough, man. There's no multiplayer. There's really no, no replay value. Once you beat it, you beat it. And that's basically Yeah, you can't it. go back and achieve other things to, like, platinum. Yeah. Money. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, I could... There's no... Like, okay, easy, medium, hard difficulties. Okay, say I want to play it on medium, beat the game. I can't... Like, if I want to get another, like trophy or something i can't go back on hard and get like another hard trophy like you could beat the game on easy and it's just like well you beat the game here's a trophy bam that's it, huh? yeah it's like wow that's a fuck dude that's like, kind can... of like a i don't know that's not that's yeah. anything, that's not yeah. worth a 60 dollar value um ex- exactly you that's know? what i'm saying that's like, a lot of people you pay are saying 60 dollars to get like a full game mm-hmm. content they they do not, say though that not they, just a one play they did say that the graphics though and the and the, and the cinematics are just oh like fucking unbelievable dude they said it's 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 probably the craziest shit they've ever seen in video game history, man. It's, really? It was like, oh my god. Um, it's currently on Metacritic.com. It's currently sit, sitting at a 6.6. Batman Arkham Knight. Mother effers. Batman Arkham Knight is getting an M rating from the ESRB. I'm excited for ESRB, this. yeah. It, got, it, just got a, it just got an M uh uh, an M rating, mature I saw rating. That. Yeah. Um, this will be the first Good. Batman game. <laughs> this will be the first Batman game to get this rating. The CEO openly spoke out about it and said that they didn't. They didn't make the game with the mature rating in mind, or wanted to uh, water water it down to appeal to the masses. Yeah. They said they just that made their damn game, dude, which is cool. And he they said, yeah. They said that he had to, he, they had the vision and and the story, and they stuck with it. And when they presented it, they're like, wow, this is pretty fucking violent. Like psh, M rating. And mm, what? Cool. that's yeah. a cool way to earn it, dude. You, yeah. didn't, you didn't force it. You didn't try to water it down. You're like, oh shit! It's like we made our game. Like here it is. So yeah. like that's cool, man. I, I can respect that. I got one last thing. It was really short on news this week, man. It was just kind of like bland. Uh, speaking of Batman Arkham Knight, the game just dropped a new trailer yesterday, today, uh, yesterday, yesterday. Uh, entitled Gotham is Mine, where it has Poison Ivy openly telling Batman that it all started with a quote meeting of the minds to dispose of Gotham and to stop at nothing to kill Batman. One specific shot, oh, I, I love this shot too. One specific shot was that of Batman looking at this like giant teleprompter of Scarecrow relaying his message, you know, like this. I'm gonna get you, Gotham, and uh, and it showed uh, Batman a side shot view. Um, of him just like banked up, dirty, and just like overwhelmed by like all these odds. Like he's just totally fucked up. It's just like, yeah. fuck, dude. Like I bit off more than I could chew on this one, and cool. I fucking love it, dude. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool, man. Because it shows that Batman is like, you know, he's not, he's not like this unstoppable force. You know, he's like, he's got human qualities. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Dude. Like he can, oh. he can get hurt. You know. And that's, uh, that's what I like. It's like when a when a when a hero can get his ass kicked and then come back. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like, like that much sweeter. Dude. Like Die Hard. 
Yeah. He gets, oh, yeah. He gets his ass oh, yeah, kicked like throughout Hard, the whole yeah. movie, and he keeps coming, dude. Well, the, well, the Arkham Knight, they say, is a whole new character, and he they showed him a little bit in the, in the thing. and Yeah. He's totally whipping his ass. Dude, he whips Batman's ass. Good. A couple Good. times. Like, just comes out of nowhere, out of the shadows. Kaboom! Just, like, totally sucker punches him, dude. Yeah. You know, Batman's, like, the master of shadows, you know? It's right, just like, right. It's like, holy shit. So you, they wonder if, like, they're like, oh, my God, is this Robin, or is this... Uh, Nightwing, right. you know, gone rogue. Who That'd knows? Be a pretty cool. That'd be twist. But yeah, they say it's a, a whole new character. On. They say them and DC totally collaborated. Yeah. It's a whole brand new thing, man. Well, that's all. That's all. I'd like to see Batman news. have like an uphill <clears throat> battle. You know, like yeah, really test the test his might. Open yeah, world, no, man, with dude. the Batmobile and everything in Gotham. I'm fucking buying that. I'm taking Tuesday off that day, dude. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah, I am. So, oh, God. That's all I got for news. That's all. Oh, that's yeah, all I got. That's good stuff, man. Cool. All right, All right, well then, well, uh, closing it off like we always do, the epic movie quarter of the week. It's J Bones. We're pretty J Bones run around here. Eight twenty five, man. We're pretty dead on time. Pretty good. We're doing good. All right, what do you got? We've all seen this movie. Everybody, I think, if if you're listening to this, you're watching this, you've seen this movie. <laughs> Preach it. Preach it. Everybody's seen this movie. You've seen it. You've seen it. <laughs> I've seen it. So let's see if you can if you can guess guess it. You don't need proof when you have instinct. It's an older film. Mm. Famous director. Famous. Mm. You mentioned him earlier. It's a very good fo- uh, a movie film. I'll, I'll, I'll say it in the guy's voice tone. You don't need proof when you have instinct. Reservoir Dogs? Fuck yeah, dude. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> you got it, Stop dude. pointing that gun at my dick! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, that's a killer. Yeah, okay, I know exactly where it's at. Yeah, man. yeah. God, uh, dude, that movie's so damn good, man. Yeah, it is. It's really that good, man. It's so good. It's like oh. Sam's hot car lot out there. Yeah. <laughs> dude, oh. Now I gotta go home and watch that, man. So I fucking told you, man. Dude. I was like, I was. That's I, a good one. I, I went home last dogs. Thursday. I was like, it just popped in my mind. I was like, that's it, dude. That's it. That's the quote, man. Yeah. Oh, dude. Cool. Yeah, that's good. That that movie, man. That closing <clears throat> segment in that movie too. It's, it's just like that's one of the ultimate endings. You were just like, oh shit, what just happened? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's yeah. really not. I mean, you can kind of do what you want, but there's really no conclusion, man. Like you really don't know exactly how it goes down. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And the thing that's so cool about that too. I'm sure you guys know this, but for other people, if you don't know, um, Michael Madsen's character, dude, John Travolta is his brother. Right. When that's right. Fiction. Yeah. Yep. Which is so cool. There's like that little tie, yeah, you know what right, I mean? Dude, yeah. And then like that briefcase, dude. That um, that uh, Vincent Vega and Jules are going yep. to go grab, dude. Yeah, the the one that has the, the light shining out of exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. All like, the gold. That's, that's from. Is that the same. You know what I mean? You got. That's you what I think is like. That's from the heist. Thing. Like that. That has to be from the heist. Yeah. You know. So yeah. it's it's those little those little ties, dude, are so cool. Like I like I love how Tarantino does it, man. Like the Big Kahuna Burger, man. And then you go watch Death Proof, and Kurt Russell's out there talking. He's like, yeah. Oh, yeah, is that the head up by that Big Kahuna Burger? There? Yeah, like, Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> and you see it, dude. You see like you see like the the billboard for it, exactly. Big Kahuna Burger. I'm like, oh my god. Like I, I love, love how he. I love how they little ties. The same universe. Yeah. It's like it's like everything operates in that same realm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like Death Proof so cool. so cool, man. Death Proof was awesome. I, I love that, it, dude. Yeah. So many people shit on it, but because it's, it's all like it's a guy killing women. It's like fuck you, dude. It's like that movie. Was <laughs> you know, it's like, dude, it was cool, man. Like who? Okay, come on. Who's to like? Who's gonna think of like this? It was a killer story. Stuntman Mike, dude. Stuntman <laughs> Mike, dude. And it's Kurt Russell who's like the king. Yeah, he's awesome, dude. Kurt he's, Russell yeah. kills it. And Stuntman Mike. <laughs> it's just it's such a cool film because like the first yeah. half of it, it's like oh shit, and then the second half of it, it's just like wow, this went somewhere I totally wasn't expecting. It. <laughs> yeah. And that one scene, dude, when they're when they're like in the diner. And it was like a what, like an eight minute continuous conversation when the camera's just rotating around the girl sitting at the table. Yep. Oh yeah. God, dude, like damn it, that's genius filmmaking, dude. Mm-hmm. And that's why y'all gotta see Birdman, dude. Like that scene right there is the epitome of why you gotta see Birdman. Oh shit, for real? That that film, it has some of the longest takes in it, dude. It's it's shot to look like one shot. Really? That's good though. I and like it's, that. It's dude, the, I way like they, when, the way they pull it off. Kind of like that Tony Jaw, like that Tony Jaw fucking scene. Oh yeah, from exactly, the pr- yeah. protector or whatever. He's like I, the I stairs, love that the stairs. Stuff, man. That's some yeah. of the coolest even, stuff in film, dude. Like in Goodfellas, dude. That whole scene when like he's taking um, her through the restaurant. That's all. Oh, that was oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. And then they sit down. They got to like bring out the drink. Like it's so beautiful. Very how it's well all orchestrated. Yeah. yeah. I love. I love when filmmakers can pull God. something like that off. 
It, Dang it, it just, dude. It shows, like, just... Put some steak <laughs> like, on it, Ike! Like, <laughs> all this shit's going through my brain right now, dude. Oh, man. Yeah, I, got a lot of, so I got a lot of catching up to do, dude. I want to I wanna watch the Badaboo. What was the other uh, horror film, film you said earlier? I was, like, really fucking good. Oh, God, dude. I don't know. We talked about Conjuring. Not Conjuring. It was another one. And you're, like... Uh, it was from this... The director Dead of the Conjuring. Silence. Oh, Dead Silence. Dead Silence, yeah. Dude, that, one, I gotta that, watch that movie's one. killer, man. I really like that movie. I think Dead Silence is on Netflix. Is it? I think. I think I saw it on the queue there. Okay. Yeah, it might, it might it be out. on there. But yeah, if not, I got it, dude. Yeah. So, hell yeah, dudes. Oh, you have it on Blu-ray? Yeah, I got it. No, I got a DVD, but yeah, you can borrow it, man. I got to give you back uh, yours, too. We watched them, so. Oh, yeah. All right, let's well, going to do it, man. Yeah, Episode done. four is in the bag. Rock so. and roll. Thank you guys so much for watching Nerf Herders Podcast. Every week we will be here yeah. kicking ass, every doing our week, thing. Yeah, every love, week. Love doing this, man. We're having <laughs> yeah. a blast with this stuff. Yeah, so. this, yeah. Has been, this has been great. And thank awesome. you for like really helping us like put this out because we've been getting like 100 views a week. Yeah, which is nice. Which Just is crazy. Starting like, off, we got yeah. 29 subscribers, which like hopefully you know we'll keep growing that. But yeah, we're 29, views. huh? We went up one, dude. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> Son of a it's bitch. It's cool, man. We're getting 100 views. So thank you guys so much for the support thus far. Spread it around. Please subscribe to the channel. Um, you know, keep up with everything. Yeah. Check us out. Facebook.com slash Nerf Herders Podcast. And uh, we'll see you all next week. And until then, keep on Nerf Herding.